You're listening to the Secret Muse Society, where we pull out the things we keep hidden about ourselves. What are the secrets that actually hold us back from the connection we crave? And what happens when we tap into the inspiration we have to offer the world? I'm your host, authenticity coach, Karen Choi. Let's dive in together. Hello, 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 muse. It is (laughs) you. I love you. Idea. What if we were to host a contest for composing a jingle for the Secret Muse Society podcast? Like I've already got my intro, which most of you really, really love and are delighted by. And I really love that music too. It's so magical. Someone once told me it's very Disney, and you should know that I'm a huge fan of Disney. So that is a major compliment. And I just feel like it, it, that kind of music represents the vibe I want to put out into the world and how I feel when I do this podcast and when I talk with you. So, okay. So here's the contest. Create a jingle about the muse, about the secret muse society. You can record it. Send me an MP3 on email at karen at karenchoy.co. What will be the prize? Well, you will be the official jingle of the Secret Muse Society podcast. That's a prize? (laughs) Throwing it out there to you talented people. Because I could talk about all the things in song. All right. I was once known for breaking out into song like a Broadway musical at any point in my day. And some people loved it and some people hated it. (laughs) And that's okay with me. I also sometimes love it and sometimes hate it. All right, my friends, today we are talking about the secret to highly efficient self-care. Yes, I do have a secret for this. And why is it important? Well, do you value efficiency? And effectiveness. <laughs> We're talking capitalistic productivity words right now and making it highly efficient and highly effective. Well, here's the thing where we can start off with. Our lives are busy. We know this. We have roles and responsibilities that are important to us. You, there's things that you want to do and get done and you've edited a lot of things out. And there's still a lot of things because you're ambitious and you want to, you know, you're not getting any younger. (laughs) And if you're die to die tomorrow, you want to know that you left your kids or this world with something that was meaningful to you. There's only 24 hours in a day and you need your eight hours of sleep. And you also need to do, you need to eat and you need to have downtime to rest and you need to have time to be inspired. You need to have time to just play and be goofy with your kids. You need to time to make love and connect with your partners. You need to partners, (laughs) partner, however, which way you go. You need to create and to write and to read. And there's just so much to do in life and to give. And then there's also we need to pay bills and you need to, you know, do chores and clean up. And so like, That's what life is, the stuff we want to do, the stuff we don't want to do. But the one thing that we can't give up is we have to take care of ourselves. And so how can we do that in a highly efficient way? That is, And when I say efficient, I define efficiency by something that is very satisfying, very meaningful, and perhaps doesn't need doesn't require like a huge budget or a lot of time or significant energy, but you are getting what you need. That's highly efficient self-care to me. It like you, it hits you in the, you know, when say you get together with your girlfriends after a really long time and you leave and your face is kind of sore because you've been laughing You've been smiling so much and your stomach is kind of sore because you were laughing so hard. And you're like, yeah, I think I got a, a bit of an ab exercise. <laughs> or and you just feel so full and it was just worth every second. That's highly efficient to me. 
Or perhaps, you know, you have bought something that makes your life easier and makes your days smoother or gives you more time with your kids. You have invested in something that just brings ease and a sense of peace, or you've invested something that just makes you feel beautiful and confident. And that just is so satisfying. Or maybe think about a time when you have spoken with somebody and they have told you exactly what you needed to hear, or even allowed you the space to talk and express what you needed to get out. And how rewarding or just grounding and calming and it it pulls you out of the weeds you know that's highly efficient or maybe it is a time when you have hung out with the kids and you went on an adventure that wasn't a trip that you had to get on a plane, or maybe it was, or maybe it was even just like the simple hanging out in the park and you left feeling so good. Or what's another time when you just give yourself something that you really, really needed and realized, hey, that was amazing. Oh, can I share recently two experiences? Actually, maybe I want to share three. Well, I'll share one. This week, I went to have one of my favorite self-care experiences, and it is this. I go to a place called Suzuki Shiatsu, and the practitioner's name is Taiko, and she's this lovely Japanese lady, and I've been seeing her for a while now. She's helped me with cricks in my neck, tightness in my shoulders and my back. I think I did a podcast episode about it one time. And just that hour of press and release of like her just touching places on my body and just pushing and moving and bringing heat to those areas is, I just melt. And in that time, I'm with my thoughts, with myself, with my feelings in a kind of, in a quiet space. And I can either try to meditate and just observe them, or I can just follow them and see where they go. And for me, that is like the most highly efficient self-care I could give myself. One hour costs me about a hundred dollars. It's not something I could splurge on, on the weekly, (laughs) which I would like to, even monthly, I'm not quite there yet, but quarterly, I could definitely splurge that. And actually, maybe I shouldn't even, it's interesting that I use the word splurge, right? But it, that investment is so, it just feels so good. It's like the, ah, wow, I didn't realize I needed that so much. To me, that was highly efficient. And I'll tell you the secret part in the back after these examples I give you. Another example of highly efficient self-care for me is I recently went to experience flotation therapy. Shout out to Nadia who gifted this to me. And it is it was one hour in a flotation tank, sensory deprived. So I stepped into the water I put my head in the ring that would hold up my neck. I laid my body out and let myself float. Over time, I let my head sink back, but it didn't fall into the salt water because the salt water is is so salty that it gets you to float, kind of like floating in the Dead Sea. And then moment by moment, as I was ready, I turned off the lights, turned off the music, and was just floating feeling the water, letting the water just touch my skin and being it. At one point, it did feel like I might get cold, but I reminded myself that the water was the same temperature as my body temperature. And so eventually, I couldn't really feel where my body was and where the water began. It just kind of became one. But that physical sensation of 
being in the water. And then that quality time of like no noise, just being with myself, nothing to see, you know, nothing to distract or catch my eye. Just closed my eyes, rested them in the darkness and feeling safe there. That quality time was like bliss. That was to me one hour of highly efficient self care. It lasts me, sustains me for days, weeks until I have an opportunity to, well, not an opportunity until I make it happen again. But it's this kind of self, highly efficient self care that I'm talking about, right? Like for here's the opposite of what would not be efficient. Highly efficient self-care to me. If I were to go out on a shopping spree and buy myself a whole bunch of stuff, like stack my clothes, yeah, it'd be satisfying, but I would get home and feel tired from seeing so many people, making so many decisions about how I spent my money, trying on different clothes, fighting the crowds. And then I'd also... Having, like, bringing the bags home, seeing all this new stuff in my closet, it would be satisfying, but it would also, it would also give me a little bit of stress. And I know some people out there love a good retail therapy, and I'm not, I'm not saying it's bad in any way. Remember, no judgment here. There's no good or bad here. It is about what serves you. And buying a lot of stuff for myself, giving myself a lot of physical gifts, are not highly efficient self-care, but it might be for you. And that is great. Another one that would really rock a lot of people's worlds, but just isn't as efficient for me or effective is writing myself a love letter. Some people could sit down and write themselves a love letter to their inner child or to who they are today and remind themselves of all the beautiful things. And you would get a lot of out of it. I've, I've heard feedback from people who get a lot out of writing themselves a love letter and it just wouldn't do it for me. So that is not efficient self-care for me. So what is the secret behind highly efficient self-care? I'm sorry it took 13 minutes for me to get here. I hope that it was a good build up. Why is self-care routines important? Well, they are clinically proven to assist in reducing or eliminating anxiety and depression. It reduces stress. It improves our concentration. It minimizes frustration and anger. It helps to increase our happiness. It improves our energy and so much more. It helps us to show up as our best selves, even when times are hard, especially when times are hard. It helps us to show up as our best selves when we are working towards things that really matter to us. And it helps us to show, like to spread good energy in this world, right? Like right now, what I see in the world is a lot of burnout and a lot of low energy. It helps us to balance out the low energy in the world by us generating or restoring new energy in ourselves. So this is why Self-care has been so important in the coaching practice I have with my clients. We always make sure that a self-care is part of the routine, part of it's integrated into achieving, going for our dreams or like really focusing on one goal or even allowing us to have space, to have compassion, to discover, you know, to notice things that we don't like about ourselves and to face those really big fears. So the secret to the highly efficient self-care is perhaps something you may have picked up in the clues that I dropped. It's The Five Languages by Gary Chapman. He wrote a book. There is a quiz if you aren't familiar with it. And if you are familiar with it, you'll know that the five languages are words of affirmation, quality time, gifts, acts of service, and physical touch. The reason why I see the love languages deeply connecting with our self-care is because self-care is about loving ourselves back to wholeness. And our love languages are what help us to meet emotional needs, to feel loved, 
for ourselves and to each other. It's just a really great tool for bringing it all together. After all, that's authenticity is about alignment. So what are your love languages? Are they words of affirmation? Do you really feel loved and encouraged when you are given a compliment? When you hear encouraging words, when someone says to you, good job, when someone says to you, I love you, when someone says to you, you look beautiful today, when someone says to you, you can do it, or how about humble words of affirmation? Hey, I see you working really hard and I know it's not easy, but I also see you having so much strength and bravery and you're still showing up every day. You feel loved when people see you and they acknowledge you with their words. Or perhaps you, your love language is quality time. You feel loved and safe when people make time to be with you when, and you do the same for others. You perhaps plan get togethers? Are you the social convener of your friend group? Do you drop whatever you might be working on so that you can focus 100% attention on somebody else? Do you love lunch dates? Do you love talking on the phone with people? Do you love game nights? These are quality time as a love language. Quality conversation is quality time too. So perhaps you are an external processor and you feel really full when you get a chance to speak to somebody and they are listening. Or perhaps you also give back by being that real listener when someone needs to vent or just talk through something. You give your time by being in conversation that explores ideas and without judgment and just finding places of understanding. So quality time, is that your love language? Is that what you like to give to others? Is that what you give to yourself? Time to process, time to think, time to feel, and time to be with all of those things. How about gifts? Is your love language gifts? Receiving and gifting gifts. When it comes to Christmas and birthdays, are you the kind of person who always just like nails it. You buy the most perfect gift. Then when that person receives it, you see them light up or they realize, oh my gosh, I didn't even know I needed this. And they just feel so loved to be invested in by you in that way. Do you give yourself gifts? It's jewelry or like gifts is paid. I I think something that is paid, it's something that you can hold Gifting is also linked to quality time, though, because you do the shopping and you or perhaps you're making something like making somebody a fresh batch of cookies when they're sad. So is receiving and giving gifts one of your love languages or is your love language acts of service? Acts of service is doing something for someone. Do you show your love by cooking a beautiful meal? Do you show your love by planning an incredible vacation, taking out the garbage, making the bed, clean, keeping the house really tidy? Do you show your love by doing for others? Is your love language a get acts of service and you feel loved when people do things for you? And the final one being physical touch. Is physical touch your love language? Like, that's what it is. You feel good when someone touches your skin, (laughs) when you get a hug, when you get a back rub, when someone is physically close to you. What else is a great example of physical touch that keeps your love tank full? Well, actually, I think physical touch is pretty clear. It's like, do you love to be physically intimate people? Is that a love language for you? sex, snuggling, cuddling, kissing, hugging, just lying beside each other. 
So if you see how these love languages that we like to receive and express to others, now think about how you could turn that in towards yourself. So for example, coming back to massage, shiatsu massage, can you guess what are my top two love languages? Physical touch and quality time. When I spend time in a place where I can think and feel and just be silent, to me, that is quality time to kind of process whatever's going on in my mind and my body and my heart, my spirit and my soul, but also paired with physical touch, like that massage, the hot hands or the hot stones, lying down on a comfortable bed, feeling the blanket, weighted blanket on my body, feeling the towel over my eyes, getting a massage on my scalp. That pairs my physical touch and quality time. Take two love languages equals highly efficient self-care. See, it matches up again for the flotation tank. The physical touch was the water, being in the water, the physical sensation of the water on my skin and kind of swimming and floating but also that quality time with my own thoughts and feelings and just to be where I was. To me, that is highly efficient self-care. I don't know why this kind of sounds like Al Wong, the way she talks, highly efficient self-care. So think about your top love languages and how you might choose your self-care accordingly instead of dabbling in the things that don't really full fill you up to the max that can sustain you think about what are your top love languages so for example if words of affirmation is your love language you can self-care with self-love by building yourself up with those words that are encouraging that are kind and humble For example, you can give yourself compliments. Look yourself in the mirror. Do that five times a day. No, sorry, (laughs) not five times a day, five minutes, even one minute a day. Look at yourself in the mirror and say, damn, you look beautiful today. Or damn, you're going to rock it. Give yourself a compliment in the mirror. Look at yourself. Say it out loud. You could write yourself a love letter or a love paragraph or a love sentence just to reaffirm who you are, how you're doing and how you're making the most of it. Or you can, here's another example of self-care with self-love. There is an incredible app called the I Am app, and it's for daily affirmations, and you don't even have to think about what good stuff you should put into your head. This I Am app, you will read it. You can see it. You can hear it. You can even record yourself giving yourself affirmations, words of affirmation. So if you're Top love languages are words of affirmation. This is highly efficient self care. <laughs> if your love language is quality time, here are some tips self care with self love. So you value undivided attention. That is important to you. So how do you spend time focused on learning about yourself and doing things you love? That is your quality time. So you could, for example, journal about your thoughts feelings and observations. You could schedule time to do an activity that brings you joy. I am working through The Artist Way by Julia Cameron and artist dates. They bring me immense joy. This is highly efficient self-care to me because of the quality time piece of just being immersed in art or nature and feeling connected with not just to myself, but to the world around me. And that actually really touches on my my values and strengths of spirituality. So that's the other layer of it is when you match your love language with what you value and what you're really good at here in this activity of self-care routines, that is highly efficient self-care. You could also learn about yourself by talking with somebody, calling up a friend, working with a coach, really expressing and hearing yourself spending time just stopping and being where you are to reflect, to look forward into the future. My clients really value that hour that we spend 
on a regular basis of them just being with themselves with no judgment, just not- just noticing, expanding their awareness and reconnecting with who they are. Quality time. How about if your love language is receiving gifts? You will appreciate visual symbols of love. They are important to you, like whether it be clothing or something in your kitchen or a piece of jewelry or flowers. Give yourself something that is meaningful to you so that whenever you look at it or wear it, it represents, it reminds you that you love yourself to enough to give it to yourself. And you can invest in a book or a course to elevate your learning. These are all gifts that you give yourself. It's just, you can create some more intention around that. It doesn't have to just be clothing that maybe you might throw away. You could get deeper and like, what does that clothing represent? Perhaps you buy something that's rooted in your family history. Oh, shout out to my friend Frida, who just recently launched a new brand called Kaima. And it is these gorgeous, gorgeous cover-ups made of fabrics from Indonesia. And Kaima is the name of the village that her grandmother is from. So you could check out Kaima Journey. If the gifts is your love language, you and you have an Indonesian background, or maybe you have a connection to the water or the beach, and it just reminds you of who you are, what you want to be. Maybe your dream is to live on a beach one day, right? Like make your purchases, make these gifts meaningful to you, and it just will elevate and create highly efficient (laughs) self-care. Two more. If acts of service is your love language, Action is important to you. So you do something for your overall well-being. And action, especially in the case where you perhaps may have been avoiding, will have even more impact and power. So here's some ideas from self-care with self-love in acts of service is, do you love cleaning your cooking? Then put on your earbuds and do it to your heart's content, right? Like just say to your family, hey, I am in the zone and you're not just cleaning for them. You are cleaning for you. Like get down on your knees and scrub that grout. I know there's people that I know you listener out there love that and get a rise out of it. And you feel so satisfied after you've cleaned and scrubbed something. Or perhaps on the opposite spectrum, what has felt like a chore to you? Something you've been avoiding? And if acts of service is your love language there, well, you can either finally take action and feel satisfied about it or teach or delegate it to someone else in your household. (laughs) Teaching is an act of service. And then when, say, your kid is emptying the dishwasher because you've taught them how to do it, now they are doing an act of service for you, which is a love language. And finally, An act of service that is highly efficient self-care could be accepting help from someone who offers. And finally, physical touch. If physical touch is your love language, your touch receptors are sensitive and important to you. So you can self-care with self-love by even noticing what touch is uncomfortable or irritating to you. Acknowledge it. And Communicate your boundaries around that, around that. That is very simple, intentional, and meaningful to create those boundaries around that. Another physical touch you could do for yourself is run your hands down your body from head to toe. Give yourself pleasure. Give yourself a head massage. Even better yet, book a head massage. Go for a massage, right? Like physical touch is such a big. It's a love language for me. Major, major, major. And so massages are so luxurious to me. Or ask somebody for a hug. That is also self-care. What is clicking here for you? Are you noticing perhaps some areas where you can show yourself some more highly efficient self-care with a self-care, self-love language, right? I hope that this helps you Wherever you are today, perhaps you can sit down and write down what is your love language. No, write down how do you 
give that to other people? How do you like to receive it from other people? And then another column, how could you gift that to yourself? That's a great way to call this inspiration to action. Call to adventure, call to your authenticity, nurture yourself. I hope that that will be your big takeaway. I love you, muse. Be good to you. And love yourself. Thanks for listening. Thank you for listening to the Secret Muse Society. Don't forget to subscribe to this podcast so you never miss an episode. And if you haven't yet, please go to Apple Podcasts to rate and review this podcast so other modern muses like you can find us too. I invite you to continue the conversation and connect with me on Instagram at karenchoy.co. Join me next week for more secrets inspired by you. I'm Karen Choi. Until next time, stay gold. Stay gold.